everyone to Sully's Rods and Customs. Um, today's job, rebuilding this um, this Stromberg carburetor. It's a, they call it Stromberg WW carburetor for a 4.2 litre engine. That's what it commonly looks like all assembled on the car, on the engine. Um, I've already stripped this one down. Uh, you can see several large pieces of it here. Um, it had a lot of had a lot of um, external leaks to this carburetor. If you watch one of my previous videos of where I was test driving the HQ Monaro, um, it stalled out in the road, didn't make it back up the driveway. Um, it poured fuel out everywhere. So one of the things I have to do is rebuild it. Um, one of the main problems I had with this thing was this is the main shaft that has the butterflies. So these little butterflies here, they go through those slots there and they screw into position. So when you're actually accelerating, it opens and closes the throttle. One of the main problems I had was, had was leakage. So I'll just turn this light around this way so you can see it a bit better. I'm not sure how well that comes up in that light there, but um, you can see how much wear this thing has in, a, in its steps in where it actually goes through the, the valve body. You can see quite a big step right there. Like that's probably half a millimetre of, of wear on that shaft and hopefully, hopefully that picks it up pretty good right there. You can actually hear that step with my fingernail picking at it. So the carburetor kit that I purchased comes with a brand new um, throttle shaft. You can see it here it's got new new screws that go through it as well. And this is um, this is like a 0.1 of a millimeter oversize, so it fits in the worn out valve body. Um, this is the old one going in there, so this is it in its actual operating position. You can hear how how loose that shaft is in there. It's just um, flopping around in there. The new one when you slide it in is a little bit firmer, a little bit firmer fit and when it's in there you can't move that shaft around. It's really firm in the hole. It turns nice and smooth but it's slightly oversized so when I assemble this I have to turn it upright, screw the butter, put the butterflies in and then um, put the screws in these holes and then punch the ends of them like, well, sorry, put the screws in, the butterflies loose, turn turn the throttle a few times until it seats. I'll then hold it up to the light, see if I can see any light through the back. When I can't, I'll tighten the four screws up. Again, make sure there's no light in the back. And then you turn it over and you punch the back of the screws so they can't actually come out. And um, and that's it permanently in then. So um, you can see you can see these parts here. I just degreased them um, in my degreaser tank. These haven't been sandblasted or media blasted in any way. They come up quite good. That's the aluminium, um, like the, the throttle base. And I'll get this out of the way now. I don't need that picture anymore. Um, what did they actually call that thing? 36 on this main thing here, the throttle body. So that's the throttle body. Six nest component here. What are they calling it here? This is like your, your float bowl assembly. So this piece here, it hasn't been it hasn't been re-coated in, in any way. It's still got the nice gold look to it. Um, it's um, it's in really good condition. I just stripped it out, got, took the guts out of it. Um, and you can see in here it's got like the yeah, clear float bowl. There's your Venturis in the top here. So it's all in really good condition. Here's the actual top section. They got this thing numbered here. Number nine, they call this the air horn. So this is the air horn. <laughs> Bit of dust and I'll blow it off. This is the air horn, um, and this is like your choke lever. I didn't actually take this part out because it was always really clean inside. You can see just how clean that part actually came up just by degreasing it. I also used um, probably three cans of this. Um, I got this at um, Auto Barn Motor Tech carburetor and throttle body cleaner. Just let me tell you, this shit is toxic, man. I use some of these um, 
I bought a packet of three, three of these nitrile, nitro solvent, um, anti-solvent gloves. Um, this is the last pair I got left. The other two pairs were just eaten away by that stuff. So although they're solvent gloves, this stuff is stronger than that, man. So when you're running the car, normally you spray this stuff down the top of your air horn there and it just cleans out all the stuff internally, but it's really good for cleaning. I just use this coarse bristle sash brush, sash brush after I use my degreaser tank. So anyway, that's the basics of what I'm going to do today. I'm going to reassemble it. Um, I have my... This is the new parts here. Here's all the new components in here for the for the new carburetor kit. Here's all the small items that are that are removed from it: screws and other plungers and um, seats and stuff for the fuel system, and all the other medium-sized parts from the bench here. So um, I'll get this camera in a bit closer, and I'll I'll start the assembly process. Right. So if I follow. I have um, one of these HQ Holden service manuals. If I follow this manual, um, it has an exploded view. It has an exploded view here of the actual actual carburetor in pieces. I'm not sure if you if you've got this book at home, but there's the exploded view of what it is. So if you want to take a screenshot of it, and there is the actual list of all the items um, that are in there. So. I'll bring the items a bit closer so you can read them all. I don't wreck the book, as you can tell. I've had this for a long time. It's a really old book. Um, there's all the listed items there. And there's the exploded view. So you can follow the, follow along with the numbers. And it talks about what parts they are here. And as you go through the, the book, it gives you all the details on how to assemble and, um, and set up the carburetor. So it has the... Um, inspection of the carburetor parts section here um, also sorry also the the carburetor kit comes with this set of instructions here <laughs> it just pretty much says disassembly use the exploded view as a guide to disassemble a carburetor and then for cleaning clean it up with carburetor cleaner don't clean plastic parts reassemble in the reverse of the disassembled order so it gives you really basic details so it's great to have this holden book um, you can see I've got quite a few of them. I've got three here, a couple of other ones on the shelf for different parts. So um, I'm not going to use that exploded view there. I'm going to use the actual full manual manual view. So it talks about washing all the parts, everything. And it goes into assembly. It says if the throttle shaft was removed, which is, this is the old one. Um, insert throttle shaft in the throttle body and assemble the throttle valves in the same position in the barrel as, as it was removed. So we're talking about this valve body here, putting the new um, shaft in there. I'm not going to put it in dry, I'm going to put a little bit of um, little bit of lube on it. So I'm just going to so I'm not going to lube the shaft. I'm just going to put a bit of a bit of oil inside the the barrel of these um, components here where the shaft actually runs through. Slide the shaft in the hole because, so, like I said, it's a, a really nice fit in there. I'm going to get the two butterflies, and they actually have a, um, a little stopper on the back of them so you can um, assemble them. And it tells you to put the butterflies in which way? That's the bottom because it's clean. It's right in this way. the wrong way. So turn the shaft that way, put the blades in, and then that way, because when you close it, when you close it, I've got to get them in the right position so it actually so they actually close. So you can see when they close they close tight into the um, into the the body there. The new kit comes with some new screws. I'll just um, open this bag up of all its components here. Um, the other thing I recommend too is I've got an old um, an old pillowcase laying down here. Reason being, 
inside this kit it has a um, it has two small ball bearings this is this is the larger of the two and there's a the small one um, if you drop those on this hard bench they bounce and they disappear ask me how I know I've only got one of the balls left from when I disassembled it because I took one ball out with a magnet turned it upside down had the other one bounce that was the end of that never to be seen again I'll find it one day and I'll know what it what it's for but yeah keep all your parts in a box and um, and just be weary that if you drop something and you don't have something underneath it you're not going to have much chance of of regathering it and finding it so there's the four throttle blade bolts I'll just go and get a screwdriver right I'll just grab a couple of screwdrivers I noticed these were quite a small Phillips head in the end of them I just wanted to get the right size screwdriver that would fit it. That's quite a snug fit, that one. That one's even better. So that, that's the right screwdriver for this job here. So I've put the, the screw through the throttle blade. After I drop the screw. I don't think I've got them in the right way. They look wrong to me. Looks like they've got to come up from the bottom. Just reposition those little suckers. Move the shaft across the way, it looks better. Line those up. Get the screw started i wouldn't recommend you use any sort of power tool to do this just nip these little babies up in there i thought this bigger screwdriver was a better fit than the stumpy screw these down then they just touch the brass There we go. So once I get these fully aligned, so the idea with this is you screw them in, leave them a little bit loose. You flip this throttle lever a few times until you get these things centralized in the hole. You really want no, no gap around the blades. They should shut fairly flush. They don't turn all the way over because you have these little, uh, what are those little pipes called in there? Let me show it in there, what they're called. It's a little, um, this is like your idle, your idle air mixture screws that go in these two holes here. So that adjusts how much idle air you get into your carburetor. So um, need to flip these around. They're, they're not an exact perfect fit in there, I can see, but um, they're pretty bloody damn close. And I think it's about rotating the rotating the blades around. You can see they're not a perfect fit. There's a little bit of a gap around all of them there, but um, that one's pretty good. I'll lift that top one up, which then compresses the um, the the slot in the blade, which is this, this gap through here, it compresses it down and it bites on the, it bites on the, the blade. Oh, that's there. That one looks pretty bloody good too. I'll tighten that one down as well. Just nip it up for now, double check it. You can see once you tighten it down, these these heads almost fit flush in with the in with the um, the top of the brass rod. 
So there you go, have a look at that, and you'll see that bit's done. I'll just peen these back bits over in a sec. So I'm not sure that you can actually see, you can see any light through there, but um, if you look down around the side of these gaps here, you shouldn't see any light through the side of those blades. You can when it's throttle open, but you can't when it's closed, which is good. Now I'm going to tighten these suckers up, and then I'm going to peen this. Um, peen the back of these threads. If you over tighten these, you'll either strip the brass out, or you'll snap the screw. Right, so what I did was I just got these little um, pliers here, and I just took them in there next to the next to the thread, and I just bit into the thread right near the the actual throttle shaft. I'll show you in a second. Hopefully you can see hopefully you can see the little little bite marks in there. See it right down. See it right down in in there near the base of the thread. So it's got a little bite mark in there now so that those screws can't rattle out. It's potential for them to possibly come loose but um, definitely can't rattle out and dropping the engine so that's that first bit done right so um, install the attaching screws loosely close the lever slowly uh, ensure the slow idle speed screw is clear of the throttle lever ear ensure a light check is done which I did put the light to see how much gap I got in there and then tighten the attaching screws after tightening the attaching screws carefully stake the hollow end taking care not to bend the throttle shaft so I try to punch that like I said but I didn't want to bend that throttle shaft, it um, took a week to get the parts in, I don't want to go and do it again. You can kind of tell it moves nice and freely, but if you, if you knock it around, it fits that good. It, um, it's a pretty good seal, it gets itself really tight in that body. Install the idle needle valves and springs. So the idle needle valves, which is your idle air valves, are these two little suckers here so just be careful don't clean these things with any chemicals or anything like that the the end is very accurate um, and they screw into these these two holes on the side here right so one goes in here so um, I've always been taught that you screw these things in all the way till they turn in and stop and then you turn out one and a half turns and I just thought that was just some old school theory so when I read it in the actual manual here it says to um, put them all put them all the way in like this and then turn them out one and a half turns which is like a basic guide of how far they should go so you can see they're vertical there there's half a turn one turn one and a half Half a turn, one full turn, that's one and a half. So as a, as a basic guide, that's what it was. Before I stripped this carburetor down, I actually checked. This one was one and a half, and that one was on two turns out. So um, we're pretty bloody close to where we were. Um, and those little idle air screws, they, um, they just meter the air that comes through these ports here. And you can see on the bottom here, on the bottom of where they where they let the air suck through, it's these two little holes right here. So as you screw these out, you meter out and you let more air through those holes so it, it'll idle faster or, or slower. Uh, next stage, install the thermostat lever and shaft assembly in its housing. Install the lever spring washer and attaching nut. Tighten the nut securely. So I've got to go onto this list, install the thermostat lever and shaft assembly. So if I go over to here, um, thermostat lever, I need to look for what thermostat lever is. There's to be an alphabetical order here. And it's, it's not. Um, it doesn't actually show that. It might be the automatic choke stuff. Um, what's automatic choke is 55. Cover assembly for the thermostat. So thermostat. So it's this end over here. There's a little shaft that fits in into this section here. Um, it's this little shaft that's here. 
what I'll do is I'll show you what it looks like. It has a little, this little linkage part is on the inside of here and the lever sticks out the back. So it gets, um, link, it gets a linkage attached to it. Uh, let me just find the picture there. And um, I'll show you what it is in the picture. I'll just take those pieces off so I can run them into the hole. Got a little washer there too, so be careful of it. So the thermostat on this they call the um, automatic choke. So that's the thermostat housing. That's the thermostat lever, 51. Um, and that's its the thermostat, sorry, what 51 is lever for the thermostat, sorry, lever and shaft for the thermostat. And 50 is the lever for the thermostat. Then 49 and 48 is the nut and the, and the lock washer. So those bits there, I'll just make sure the camera's still in the right position. Yep. Those bits there are these two pieces. So again, just a touch of oil into that hole there, simply because it's a, a lever. So you can see there now it's in the hole and this thermostat lever needs to face which way? This way. Um, this way. Like that. So it's got free movement. Put a little washer on. The nut on the back of it. I need to get a smaller spanner for that because I don't think I've grabbed one the right size for it. I'll grab a smaller spanner. Alright, I have the spanner here. It's actually a 516 spanner. You can't fit the ringy on because it doesn't fit down the end there, so you've got to use the, the open end of part of it and just tighten that up. Just be careful. It's a really small shaft. You could quite easily over tighten this one and then you're screwed. You probably can't buy the part. You've probably got to buy a whole carburetor. And these old carbies, not the cheapest, not the cheapest anymore. Um, a couple hundred bucks to buy an old shitbox second hand one. Right there we go. So it's actually quite a quite a firm fit. It doesn't wobble around too much. So it's this carburetor is in actually quite good condition. So we, we've done that. Which was over here. Install thermostat lever and shaft assembly and uh, tighten the nut securely. Note, do not install the thermostat cover at this stage, which is this part here. This is like a manual choke version. Um, new gasket should be placed on the thermostat cover and the cover assembled on housing with the hook of the thermostat spring down. Set the thermostat cover mark one notch rich for automatic models and on the mean setting for manual models. So I don't know what that actually means on this thing here. Um, it, um, it just has a slot in the top there. I don't know what it means for the, the lean and stuff. I know that this, this rod here has to line up with that rod that's in there. Um, and the cover goes on. So I'm assuming there's the, there's the rich, there's the lean. Straight in the middle is the middle mark, which has a, which has a notch. Put that over there where it's supposed to go. Get this over there where it's supposed to go. Turn this thing around to the top. How's that fitting in there? Let me just see that explosion here. So this is a manual choke version. I don't know if, if this is the right thing or not. I'll have to check what's happening. So I'm not going to assemble this right now. I've got all these other bits in here exactly how they should be, but this is a manual choke version. Looks like someone set it up for a a manual choke with a little lever on the top of it. I don't know if it's actually supposed to be in there. There's nothing inside here to stop or control anything other than the, the body at the top. So I'm going to leave that off for now. I'm not going to assemble that. This is the view we've got at the moment. 
and we'll do some more investigation on that. So that should be that whole area. It gives you a new little gasket to go onto that that bit there. There's this this ring gasket here, which fits into into that section there to seal it off, which I'm not going to use for now. So that's free assembly of that um, that bottom section there. Next section here is main body. So this is the main body, main body of the carburetor. It says install the drive plugs and lead balls. The drive plugs and lead balls. Lead balls or lead balls? Drive plugs and lead balls. So I haven't taken those lead balls out of the bottom here, right? Because I, I was able to clean this thing well, really well and blow it out of there from the bottom. So I didn't actually remove these lead balls. So they're not being installed, so 56 is what it's talking about here, 56 is the drive plug which is these two these two slugs on the end, I haven't taken them out either because I was able to blast that through there with the carby cleaner and compressed air I just got the compressed air here and I just put it through the hole blew it all out with carby cleaner in it, there's a couple of little jets in here and as long as I can hear all those jets porting then I knew everything was okay. Um, where are we at? So I'm not putting that in there. Lead balls. Where's number 30? Number 30 is the lead, lead ball or lead ball it's called. Um, it says install drive plugs and this is lead, L-E-A-D, lead balls, balls, it says like there's two, using tool 6A11, install the main discharge jets with the mitered face of the jets parallel, so they're still in there, I haven't taken them out, so if you look in the bottom, those main jets are still down in there, I have not removed those. All the main discharge jets with the mitered face of the jets parallel to the direction of the airflow. Okay, hold the body upside down and install the main metering jets. Main metering jets. Hmm. Main metering jets. Sorry, the 31. 31 is the main discharge jet, which is still in there. Um, 32 are those two screw bits in there which was the jet main the main metering jets I've got them in there still then there's these little brass wash, uh, copper washers which I have in there already actually now I have a spare set here so I'll, I'll pull them out with a little pick and then I'll put the new ones in oops I just remember to turn the camera on so um, these two little copper washers that were in these holes here, I was just picking away at them with these picks here and I couldn't get them out. So what I ended up doing was getting this little scalpel type thing and I had to slide it underneath the copper washer and turn it around to get that to pop out. So um, according to this, the metering jets, um, the discharge jet and the metering jets are, are in there. <coughs> The what have we got here? The copper washers, the new ones, are here. They're the new ones. Put the old ones in the box with all the old shit. The new ones can go into into position in there. I'll just push them down with a with a small flat bladed screwdriver. To make sure they're in their in their home. And the other one. So when they go in there, the actual plugs that fit in, which are these two, these two plugs here. These two plugs go in there and they tighten up and they crush the the washer up against the face. Get a big screwdriver for this one. Make sure it's nice and tight. If you forget that copper washer or you don't replace those copper washers, then you're in some trouble because it'll leak. 
can pretty much guarantee it. I hear a lot of stories about people getting carburetors overhauled at some of the bigger companies out there and they bloody leak when they get them back and most of the reason is because they don't put all the washers in or someone just forgets to put one in which is not hard to do. Um, so that's in there. Better put the end of this scalpel before I cut my hands. This then talks about um, place new copper gaskets in there, plugs and tighten securely, place new gasket on the power bypass jet and install new jet. So power bypass jet. Where the heck is that? Look for power bypass jet. I'll just pause the video until I work out what the heck that is. 26 idle tube, idle tube, 1067, Let me work out what that is, and I'll, um, when I do, I'll turn it back on. Right, uh, power bypass jet is that component that's still in there. You'll see it's like a little spring loaded needle and seat there. I just found it, put it in there. Um, I'll just tighten that sucker up so it's in there and tight. Carefully don't damage that damage that seat, seat on it. So that's in there now. Power bypass jet, so, so if you're looking for it, it is that little component there and it has this little aluminium washer that goes underneath it. Um, so that's the power bypass jet. That's installed there, and a little zip. Delicious. Um, <clears throat> still power bypass, discharge check ball. Still power, still pump discharge check ball. <clears throat> so the pump discharge check ball is which one? Not 30. 65 by the look of it there, 65, 65 ball pump inlet check valve. What was the other one? The other one is 23 pump outlet check valve. So it's telling me to install, install the pump discharge check valve in the center passage and install a new gasket, pump discharge nozzle and attaching screw. The pump discharge nozzle is 21 on there, pump nozzle. So, the, I want to see if there's a magnetic to pick up these balls. That one's not magnetic enough. All right, so this little, little ball here. You have to go into Install pump discharge check bolt in the center passage and install a new gasket, pump discharge nozzle, and attaching screw. So that, that center passage right there is where I've got to get that ball to go in. I'll do it over here, like I said. So if I drop it, there you go, straight in the middle there. Perfect. Here's the actual discharge nozzles. So I'll just blow a bit of air through there again just to make sure they're clear. Still, yeah. this side, yep, not through the little guts there. There we go. So there's that. There's this little gasket that goes under it. So right in the middle there, this gasket goes on top. There's no gasket glue or anything that goes on these. Just sits on top there. And it has this weird screw. Double check that's the right screw. Yep. This screw here, which goes down the guts. Again, I'll just give that another blowout, even though I blew this out when I cleaned everything. I just gotta make sure that the air comes out. Yep, at the side holes. So you can see that hole, that that little um screw there where is it it has a hole in the center of it but it also has 
a little hole either side of it here. And if I turn it around, you'll be able to see straight through it. Anyway, so that goes on the top of here. Pump discharge nozzle goes on there. Make sure it's aligned properly. Put your gasket underneath. You don't want um, you don't want anything to be misaligned here. Any misalignment causes obstructions in your passages there. And go easy on the screw to start with. You just make sure it's lined up because if you strip that baby, you're in trouble. So I can feel it just starting to take up on that gasket now. And tighten it up. Pump discharge nozzles in there. Um, and the check ball valve and the new gaskets and the nozzle. Install the fulcrum pin in the float hinge. Place the float in the main body and install the fulcrum spring. So here's my float. Here's my float fulcrum pin. So where that's got to go is it's got to sit in. Let's just turn this around a bit. It's got to sit in that little that little saddle down there. So I'll put it in there. It's got to go a certain way, which is up. I'll put it in there and I'll show you how it goes. So now you can see you can see how it's sitting in there, sitting right in there now, and you can see the actual pin either side of it. Now there's a little little clip that goes in here. They give you a brand new one. It's a tiny little little wire thing. I put it on my hand so I don't drop it. That's the little clip wire that holds it in place. And I'll see if I can pop that in there now. Um, it goes in, sits on top of the lever. I'll show you once I get it in there. Get some little pliers onto it. Because that's not in at the moment. Put it in there on top of the lever. Push it down into the sides over the edge of the edge of the pin. Let's see if I can bring that camera in closer here now to give you a close-up of it. Um, let's zoom that right in there. This camera right in here. Sorry about the cinematography there. Pretty average I know but um trying to get you a good look at it. Get this light in closer too. All right, so if you look now, you'll be able to see. You'll be able to see. There's the fulcrum pin down there for the float. There's the little spring lever going to the top. And I'm going to try and push the top of this now down under that little, under that little nib at the top there, which is not that easy to do. Um, need another little screwdriver to push that. In position there now. All right. So hopefully you can see that now. Right. Can you see that? Come on, you shitbag. What's it focusing on? It's not focusing on this. Here we go. Right. You see in there that little clip is in the back of there, so that float can go up and down. Can't actually fall out so there we go that's that part of it done which was not that difficult but I'll get you back over here again get you closer to it so that says there install the float needle valve gasket and seat and pipe securely to the body so I have my new needle valve let me get it out of here and the little aluminium seat, aluminium washer. So what happens here is the here's the seat. Oh, here's the body. Here's the seat. The seat goes through that way, and it actually seals on the back of that little hole there. So as the float goes up and down, this thing goes in and out, and it controls how much fuel you get 
into the valve body. So if it goes in this side here. I'll just do it this way so I don't lose everything. And everything is brass and aluminium here, right? So don't go to town on with shifters and crap like that. Get a spanner that fits. The right sort of spanner. Nip it up. I think I've mentioned it a hundred times in other, other videos. And just nip it. Alright, so that's aluminium seated on aluminium. Now, in there you can see, hopefully you can see, you can see the, the, the tip of the the valve or the, the float touching the little needle valve as it goes back and forward it's opening and closing the valve it's really hard to see can you get it in there anyway that's what's happening it's actually oh there it goes which is it really doesn't let much air through there So you can hear that as it as it comes off its seat, you'll hear it as I move the float up and down. I can lock it. So yeah, I can move that that way and let's fuel through. So in this book it gives you some instructions on how to adjust that later on. So we'll we'll look at that. Right, there's a, a baffle that's got to go in here to separate that full flow of fuel so it doesn't actually create turbulence to move that float around too much when it's when it's actually um, getting fuel in it. But one thing we've got to do first is we've got to measure this float height. This float height should be, according to the book here, it says 11 64ths of an inch from the top of this plate to the, from the top of this plate to the tip of that float. So I have a metric and imperial rule here. Um, this has a 30 seconds and a 64ths side to it. So you've got to invert the bowl and you've got to measure from where the float touches float touches the side of the the tip of the um, tip of the ruler. Hopefully that's in view there. And I can see that says eight eight sixty fourth. So what you do is you get a pair of pliers and you grab that little tab back there and you just bend it back slightly till it gives you the right amount of Right amount of clearance on the measurement there. So I can see that now says eight, nine, ten, ten and a half. So I'll just go a little bit more back. Um, back that one a bit. So it just stops the float from coming down as far as you can see there. And if I go there now, oh, like that, flip it over, I can see that is. 12. I've got to come back slightly, bend that back just slightly. This is just a pretty close gauge to what it should be. There you go, 1164th. So that float, when it comes up now, I guess and if, if you wanted to, you can do it this way. You can lift the, lift the float up with your finger and measure it. Measure it this way, it's probably easier to see. Either way, it's still 1164th. So, that's the measuring your float level correctly um, in your float bowl. So like I said, either press the float and bring it up and measure it this way, or in, it tells you in the, in the book to invert it so there's no actual pressure on it. So it's just like float height. Then what you've got is you've got this little groove here and in here, and this little baffle plate goes down the side of there, and it just pushes in flush with the top. It doesn't, it doesn't impede on the float movement, so everything's good with that. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much that's pretty much the float bowl part of it done. It says there should be 11 64ths up from the flange of the main body when measured at the center of the float. Okay, so I should measure at the center of the float here. I'll, I'll do it this way. I measured at the end over there, but let's just measure it 60 fourths. A bit of a dint in the float there. Yeah, that's a 
it's probably 11 and a half that's close enough for me they have a flight level gauge you can see in the picture here it shows you they just sort of stick in the top and when they when it flips up like that it touches the side of the, the float um, if you get this too high not only will it um, it'll allow too much fuel in the chamber and it will overflow if you don't have it high enough you don't get enough fuel down into this passage here where the actual pump goes so um, it says hold the float arm away from the needle when bending the, the lever which I did turn the carburetor upright position again and store the idle tubes so there's two idle tubes here um, I'll grab them now out of this box um, and again I've blown air through these but I'll do it once more just to be sure I can actually I don't need to I can actually see daylight straight through the middle of them they're all clear so these idle um, what do you call them idle tubes is still idle tubes and place the pump inlet check ball in the center channel of the pump so these idle tubes go one down in there one down in the top there and then it's got to drop this other ball this other check ball hopefully something's magnetic enough to pick it up without me dropping it put the split pin back in there so this check ball goes straight down the bottom of the pump housing straight down in there um, install pump bottom spring on pump piston so this is the pump piston here's the here's the bottom spring you can see here it's got to, you've got to install that onto the top of there this this is a leather type um, leather type pump seal so you've got to lubricate this thing with oil the, the newer model ones um, the newer model seals have um, they're like a neoprene or something but the problem is with them the the new fuels with ethanol and stuff get into them and the new fuels will um, wreck those seals so um, most most kits you see come with a, um, a leather one but some of the newer models like I mentioned come with um, with the plastic ones so you gotta you gotta bend this seal out a bit to get the shape that you want you want it to be nice and tight in that housing so if you bend it out like this you get a bit more oil down there so there's um oil on the inside of the leather you don't want to overdo it because you don't want to block off any ports in the bottom there but you really need this to be like so um it says install the pump bottom spring on the on the pump piston and install the pump piston in its cylinder making certain that the piston leather is not creased and that it bears evenly on on this complete circumference so i'm just still bending this out a bit here just to make sure this goes on the top here now straight down the hole just make sure that it's not creased so i'm just going to sort of push it in a little bit with the edge of this little screwdriver here and it should just drop in when it's that's right if it's wrong it won't won't go in so it's not it's not creased i can feel it quite a tight all right i can see that's it moves easy up and down now it's in the right place and i'm just gonna clean that oil off my hands it says there it's not creased and it bears evenly on its complete circumference so there's that part of it done too right next it talks about install the vacuum power piston stake in place note do not lubricate the piston or piston bore so power piston let's check that out see what that is um, Power piston, piston vacuum power 19. What is that one? 19. That is already in there, I believe. I oh, know it's over here. Is it? No, that's already in there. It's in. It's in the bottom of this one. So let me just double check that I've got it right. Um, air horn. Yeah. So this bit's 
assembly is complete for now. I'll just put it to the side over here. This is the air horn. It says to install that. I didn't take that out because it's got these crimped bits in the bottom of it here. I just blew out every passage and channel that I had and cleaned it all and um, everything seemed to work fine. It does, it does not deliberate it. It did not lubricate the piston or the piston bore, which I didn't do. Install the choke shaft assembly and choke valve and install screws loosely. So that's the choke valve assembly. Again, I didn't take that out. It fits really well in there. Um, it's still in there. The screws are still in there. They're, they're peened on the end, so they can't come out. So that's done already. Install the fast idle lever spring washer and attach the nut. Um, spring washer and attach the nut. That's done there. Place the choke diaphragm on the air horn and install attaching screws. Uh, where is that little baby? Here it is here. So this thing here, it gets mounted on the side over here. It goes that way. Let me just look in the picture. Yep, definitely goes that way there. Looks like it's been bent somehow, doesn't it? Like it's been dropped. It doesn't look like what it should look like. It, it should line up with these other levers over here. So I'll have to check that out because that looks like it's damaged. And that could have been part of the reason this thing wasn't um, working properly with its choke. It looks in the picture that it's just straight across. So um, I would say, judging by the damage on this thing, that it's been dropped and it's sort of bent that hole out. So I'm just going to go put this in the vise and straighten that back up. There we go, we've straightened that back up. It um, definitely looked like it didn't line up there before. Now it looks like this lever lines up with where it's supposed to go there. Um, I'll try and find the correct screws for it in here. Um, let me see, which ones would they be? They are definitely those, so there's two of these suckers. I can only assume it's those two because they look like that. Let's just see for the right thread. Make sure they go in all the way because if they don't go in all the way then they're not the right ones. There's a couple of shorter versions in there. See that's not them. That's definitely too long but there's some other small ones there that Like this doesn't actually show you the type of screws that come out of there, but it, um, there's one, there's the other. All right, so there's the only other ones that are actually that size. So that goes on there. One screw there. One screw in there. Don't move these babies up. I'll give them a bit of a nip up. We've got a. There we go. So at least now it's in line with what it's got to actually lever. next stage. So it says there that is still the choke shaft assembly done that. Um, close the choke valve and align down that. Install the fast idle lever spring washer and attaching nut. Tighten the screw that's done. Place choke diaphragm on air horn and install attaching screws yet. Install keyed end of the choke kick rod to the diaphragm keyed end of the keyed end still the keyed end of the choke kick rod so 
so 29, 29, rod fast idle, no, 17, pump rod, and what are we looking at here, 2, rod choke kick rod, so it looks like that shape, that's in there, choke kick rod, it says install the fast idle lever spring out, install the keyed end of the choke kick rod to the diaphragm, the keyed end, okay, so, I'm not sure which direction it goes in there, but let's see which way it goes. Looks like it goes. It goes that way, but um, you get the friggin' thing in there. It's, a, it's got a key on it. Feed in for the rod, and the other one goes here, so it's hard to get that that feed in in there. Mm. It's fit in the friggin' hole, isn't it? Can't be. That can't be the right part there because. It in that sharp hole there. There should be another little. Aha, here it is out here. Wrong one. So the keyed end goes into there, and the fixed end goes where? Alright, oh, that's in there. Um, still the key end of the choke rod to the diaphragm link and attach the opposite end to the slot in the choke lever. Install the retaining clip to the choke lever. So, in this moving part up here. And install the retaining clip. So it gives you these little weird clips here. I'll show you what they are. They're like a little R clip. Can't get the friggin' these out. Screwdriver that's magnetized. There we go. So there's the little clip there. It's called retaining clip, but it's like a little R shape. I don't understand why if I put it that way. Uh, clip. I could tell someone had tampered with this before because um, the retaining clip actually must be this spring here. Isn't it? it doesn't have a hole in that rod. Oh, yeah, it's got a little, it's got a little slot in it for this clip to go in. Let me get the flyers again because my fingers are too fat. And hold the end of this. And push it over there. So if that's on there, when this diaphragm pulls back, it'll open the it'll open the choke. There you go. And if it's um if it's a full full throttle, this chokes back. This thing's holding it back anyway, so it can't actually can't actually go out. There we go. There's the retaining clip in all its glory. Doing its job. It looks like you need to put it vertical so that when all this operates and actuates, it doesn't doesn't want to pull that clip off. So I'll just turn it around a bit. There we go. That's the retaining clip on there. Uh, uh, clip. Attach vacuum hose to diaphragm and to metal tube air horn. Vacuum hose, which is this one over the back here. I kept the hose. Um, right, it's a bit of a tricky sort of shape. Gotta remember which way this thing goes. 
let's just look at the this just says this has got a soft hose from from there to there but this one was actually shoved onto there and this end was shoved onto onto there right there we go that's the vacuum hose on there final assembly of basic groups all right let's just get to that when I pause this. Final assembly of basic groups. Place the new gasket on the main body. Carefully guide the air horn over the pump stem. So put the gasket on this main body. Here's the gasket here. Just give it another bit of a blowout with the air just to make sure nothing's... Nothing's settled in there for now. Place the gasket. over the top of that fits around those two little air horns over there like that guide the main body over the top of this and that plunger has to go all the way down the bottom and touch the other component down there this thing has to turn around and go into that pump hole there need to jiggle this thing to get it in there make sure the gasket's still sitting over those two air horns pull the top down and make sure everything lines up as it does there yep place the gasket on the main body and air horn over the pump stem install attaching screws Caution, hold air horn in the, in the exact vertical position when assembling to avoid possible vacuum piston stem becoming wet between the power and bypass jet and the main body. Ensure the engagement of the upper ends of, of the idle tubes in their passages in the air horn. Hold the assembly upside down and place new gasket on the main body. Place the throttle body on the main body. That's a different one. So I'm putting these screws into this now. So I'll just Take that out of there. I'll find the screws for this. There, the main ones at the bottom. These ones here are the correct size for the top. Get these little suckers out of here. That looks like them. So, let's get this gasket in the right position. Loosely attach all the all the screws let's not do that right now because it's something stopping it from from seating oh that's all right uh -huh. i just didn't have it pushed down hard enough This is supposed to be on top of there. We're gonna knock that little freaking pin out and get that sucker in there. All right, that's a bit of a, a bit of a turn of events there. So this goes on there like that. Somehow I've got to get this rod, this thing. To there hmm. let me just check that drawing seven one seven one is the washer pump rod ceiling and eighteen is the cotter pin pump rod and pump piston okay. 
the way it goes above that, so that's okay. That's where it goes. Once it's on there, it goes on top of that. So let's get that back in there again. This goes over through this hole. This thing goes down the side of there. This lever goes through that hole. No, it doesn't. <laughs> that up I got the the rod pulled out which I gotta put back in now rod's gonna go back down this this hole here without messing it up gasket's gotta go back on now I'm just showing you that when I do when you do this stuff Sometimes you have a few little cock-ups along the way. This needs to go over the top of there, like that. This then needs to go into this assembly here, like that. All right, now we're cooking with gas. Now let's Make sure everything's in its place. Get these screws. Sometimes when you're doing stuff, if things don't go properly the first time, it's for a good reason. And for me, it, was, it wasn't in the right position, so things didn't line up and I just didn't want to force it. Get the screws in. Um, Oops. Put this one in the back, it's a bit harder to get in there because the rod is in the way. Let's put it in with some pliers. There we go. Let's bring that one a bit too. This one in the back over here. Make sure all these screws go in properly first before you tighten anything up. So in total there's one, two, three, four, five, six, six screws on this assembly. I'll just nip them all down. Once it's all nipped down then you can sort of tighten them up. I'll do these two first next to the air horn and the float bowl. Then I'll do the two on the Right bowl in because they're the ones that are full of fuel all the time. Gonna do the back two here. So worst case scenario with these back two, if you don't get them right, you have an, an air leak, which it's not as bad as a fuel leak. Alright, that's that's that assembly together there now. That's good. Let's just um well, let's go to the next step. Attach the vacuum hose, the diaphragm is done, done there, hold assembly upside down, place the new gasket on the main body. So hold the assembly upside down, I'll put this here so I don't wreck my book. And put the gasket on the main body. Here's the gasket here. Just um Make sure there's no gasket material still stuck on there. It's a little bit just there. I've got a razor blade here somewhere. If I remember where I put it. Here it is here. I've got a little bit on the side. I'm just gonna scratch away from the from the bore so I don't drop anything in there. Same with this side. Turn this upside down this way, and it goes one direction, so make sure you get it facing the right way. There you go. Turn this baby upside down. This only fits one way as well, which is this way. And lower it down 
onto the plate. Get your screws that you took out earlier when you disassembled. There's only four of these bigger screws here. We have this bigger one that goes in there. We have these smaller ones that go in these other positions down in here. Again, put them in there. Don't go to town on them until everything lines up or you'll pinch a gasket. Just make sure that's still focused on that area there, yep. Just doing them up with like fingertip tight on that screwdriver at the moment. All right. Now, before I tighten it up totally, I'm just going to look and make sure the gasket is all in and correct, which it is. Now we'll tighten up these two middle ones first. Turn my bigger screwdriver onto it. I think my chest is cracking me. So that's that assembled there. I'll assemble this down below on my body, tighten the screws securely. It's still it's still keyed end of fast idle rod to lever end and insert opposite end in the slot of the fast idle cam. So the keyed end of the fast idle rod. 59, I think it's the fast idle rod there. Nope, that's a choke rod. There's the, no, that one's already all installed. 17, pump rod, nope. 29, rod fast idle. So fast idle rod goes between, oops. Which way are we looking? We're looking that way. So fast idle rod goes between this lever here and the what does it go between 17 pump nope 17 goes to the pump here on yet 40 40 is this main lever on the side here which way does that go looks like it goes that way onto this so this looks like it goes on There's the, the nut, there's the washer, there's the nut. Make sure we don't cross thread this this one because it's um metal metal nut on brass.
Yeah, that's not going back so well. Now I've got that. Oh, I've got this idle screw in there. All right. Let's um, get this done up. Where's me? Spanner that I used before, half inch spanner, tighten it up. All right, so that's actually making the butterfly tight in the side there. So I'm going to. I'm going to have to do something here about that. I'm going to have to. This is this obviously this shaft is not dimensionally correct. I'm going to have to file the side of it here to fix it up because it's um it's impacting the. Like if I tighten it up, those butterflies hardly turn. So I'm going to take this bottom plate off and see what I can see what I can adjust there because they. They move freely now, but as soon as I tighten it up, they um, they get tight. Hmm. All right, I'll um, pause it and I'll let you know what I find. Right, so what I found was. Um, moves nice and freely now what I had to do was like if you look I loosened off those four bolts which were pretty hard to open up because I already scored the thread on the back of them and then I tightened this up so in the instructions it doesn't tell you to put this on first so you need to put this on first tighten that up then you've got a bit of sort of axial movement in that shaft there so then when you tighten them up it's not gouging the side because what it did was um, can't really see it there you can kind of see it sort of right down. I don't know if you can see it in there, but right down in the bottom there where that butterfly was shutting down, it was dragging it into the side of the body down in here. It had like a tiny little burr there because it wasn't allowing it to move. But now it's now everything's free. I'm going to retighten those bolts up again and um, make sure make sure everything's removing in there all right and then nip them up again there you go beautiful so now I'll make sure they're tight I'll re-score the threads in the back with the pliers again. I'm pinching it right down against the brass at the shaft and the thread, and I'm sort of turning it the direction that the thread would tighten up on, because if I turn it the other way, it will start to undo the actual... Oh, so you kind of see how you can't really see. You can see the pinch mark in the bottom down there. So those bolts won't come out now. That moves freely. So here's a, here's a tip for you. Follow the entire, follow through the entire video first. <laughs> Don't start building your carving along the way. Watch what I've done first. Um, see the mistakes I'm making along the way or the mistakes the book doesn't ask you to put that um, item 40 on, which is the lever for the throat lever for the throttle which is this when you accelerate it pulls it pulls that rod that levers in the side of it there it doesn't tell you to do that so that's a bit of a trap don't fall for it <laughs> and then put this on now again get that thing out of the way Put these bolts back in there again. There's one, two big ones, and um, two smaller ones. 
again just finger tight to start with we can go in the gasket right If you don't get it right, it um, it will obscure or obstruct the throttle hole. Okay, put these in now. What the hell's going on there? <laughs> Maybe put the bolts in there first and line them up. It's this friggin' lever over the side here keeps getting in the way and rolling everything out of the way now that this is on there. Move the gasket a bit. Alright, that looks like it dropped in straight on top that time. There's those two bolts in. Get the other two bolts in, or screws, whatever you want to call them. Get a couple of smaller ones just loosely. Like I said, if you assemble sections of it, then test everything moves, assemble a bit, test everything moves, like this. This freaking thing is the same, right? So, I've got this on the wrong side of the lever now. <laughs> Take it back out again. Otherwise you tighten the screws up and you've got to pull the thing apart three or four times and then the um, then the um, gaskets get crushed. So raise it up again. After I undo the screws enough. screws in again right. tighten these babies up Open for the last time, everything's moving there like it should. Excuse the grunting, but these bolts are going to be tight. Alrighty. So now, we've got to take some linkage up to these things. Alright. Back to where we were. So, final assembly, install the keyed end of the fast idle rod to the lever and insert opposite end in the slot on the fast idle cam. Here's the fast idle cam. So this lever here and this one here. So, just gotta find out what the fast idle rod looks like. 17, pump rod, 29. 29, fast idle rod and one of those little clips so get one of the clips out of there oh, bloody hell. fast idle rod looks like fast idle rod tell you what it looks like 17 Looks like that one. Pump rod, 29. This one here. So there's a, a 
cam and like a little keyed end. If you look at this, you can see there's like a little cam on there. It matches that little cam opening on here. So if I put that in there, which way am I putting it in there? This way. Mm, not that way. This way from underneath, I think. Mm, what does it say? Install the key into the far side of the rod to the lever and insert the opposite end in the far side of the rod cam. Install the retainer clip to the straight side of the clip in the hole of the rod. Install the pump rod sealing washer over the pump piston, which is already there now. Let's see if we can get that. Sucker in there. It goes in there. That way. This goes in here. This way. It says install the clip. This is the clip I've got here, but it's got a hole for a circlip, so. I just want to see what it shows. It actually shows one of those R clips. It shows one of these R clips. Twenty-eight retainer, retainer for the fast idle. So it does actually show this type of clip, which I'll put in here. There it is there. So I'm guessing as as the choke rolls around, it pulls it pulls this rod around and it holds the it holds the choke holds the choke open. If you let it go, it backs it off. That's when you've revved the car full throttle, it opens that up and lets that drop out, huh? Mm -hmm. All right, got that done. Uh, then I install the pump rod sealing washer over the pump piston stem and attach the pump stem to the pump lever. Pump stem to the pump lever, yep. Install the cotter pin. Well, that's that's a cotter pin there, right? So this one must have to have a, the circle clip on the side down here. Because this is a, definitely a cotter pin here. Goes in there like that. Then that means these ones have sort of retaining pins, but um, this is a split pin just bend that down like that so it can't come off yep um, still the, uh, see the cutter pin is still the keyed end of the choke rod in the slot of the thermostat shaft lever and opposite end of the rod on the choke lever so that still the key end of the choke rod so the choke rod 59 choke rod that's that long weird shape one here is it nope, it's this one choke rod choke rod is this one and the top of it is this weird shape here the bottom of it goes into that key slot there, top of it goes into that there, and it has the other split pin that holds it in. So if I put that in the hole, there like that, get this little little pick to bend the ends of this, bend the ends of this thing back around. Actually, I'm going to put it in up the other way if I can. 
see if I can get it in there with a little pair of pliers. Let's see what we can do. Put it in. Put it in upside down there, is that right? Yeah. You bastards, stay in there. Because if I put it the other way around, it kind of gets in the way below it. There you go, everything's sort of working there. Very good. And we're still the kicking and the two adjustments. So, I still have this clip to go on the top, which is the one that holds the air cleaner on. That goes in there, pop down the side. That holds the air cleaner on. It's actually a little bit loose there. Actually, I haven't got the pump rod in the side of here yet, right? This thing looks like it's got two. This thing should have two separate um, split pins for it, but there's no split pin in here. Let's just have a quick look over the page here. So there are a pump link. Um, Stuff. So this one's going to go on to this side here from somehow. This sucker here. must be some marks in this thing where I was running. There is, right there. That goes in not that way. That goes in that way. No, it doesn't. It goes in that way, around there, and it goes into that pump right there. So as you do that, it pumps the fuel. So I've just got to get some, um, I've just got to get some small split pins now to hold these in. There you go, that's the full assembly. Um, the only thing I haven't put on is this choke assembly here now. Um, everything else is, is right. This is the, these are the gaskets for the choke ring on the side here this is the one that goes in the top seal in the air cleaner and this is the one that goes um, this is the one that goes in the base to hold it um, onto your onto your manifold so there we go um, I've got some adjustments to do on this as per this next section here but I'll um, I might make that another video how to adjust all the linkages and stuff Right, hope you enjoyed it. Kind of another long one, probably an hour or so, maybe a bit more. But that's how you rebuild a WW Rochester. Um, this, these Rochesters, they have they have um, codes on the top of me. You can see this one here. It says twenty three three zero six three. So that's a nineteen seventy two model HQ carburetor. That's the number that's on top of them. So if I can find the little chart that shows you all these numbers and stuff, I'll, I might put that up. As a picture, um, um, probably right about right about here in the video. Hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget like and subscribe, and um, share it around with your mates. Thanks for watching.